Congratulations on your purchase of a new Q-Drive. We know you'll find it a valuable addition to your system in the years to come. But before you get started, please take a moment and watch this section of the video all the way through once. Then rewind the VCR to this point and begin the installation of your Q-Drive. Pause your VCR at each step. If you need to review the step, rewind your VCR and replay that installation step. By the way, we'll be demonstrating the installation on an Apple II GS, but installation on the 2E is very similar. Be sure to read the Q-Drive care and feeding manual before starting, no matter which computer you have. To begin, make sure the computer is turned off, but leave it plugged in. This ensures that the computer will remain grounded so that static electricity won't accumulate in it. Now, remove the top from the 2GS and set it aside. There are two latches on the back of the 2GS lid. Just press them in and the top lifts right off. Now, open the Apple II high-speed SCSI card package. In this package, you'll find a manual, some disks, and some tools to aid you in installing your SCSI card. Inside this static proof bag is the SCSI card. We'll use this to connect your computer to your Q drive. For now, this is the only part that we will worry about. Computer components are very sensitive to static electricity. Before handling any components, be sure to touch the computer's power supply to drain any built up static charge from your body. Even if there's no shock or spark, you can still damage computer components from the static electricity you build up just by walking across the floor. So be sure you touch the power supply before opening the static proof bag, and touch the power supply frequently throughout the installation. In reality, static damage is not all that likely, but it pays to take precautions like this when you're handling an expensive device like a hard drive. So now that you've removed all the static from your body, Carefully remove your SCSI card from its static-free bag, being sure to hold the card by its edges. Make sure that you do not touch the gold fingers at the bottom of the card. You will install this interface card in one of the slots in the back of the computer. There are seven slots, and usually you use the rightmost slot, slot 7. If you install the card into some other slot, you may have to give up the function of one of the back panel ports. The 2GS also has a memory expansion slot toward the front of the computer. Just ignore that slot. You cannot install the SCSI card in that slot. On the Apple IIe, there is also a memory expansion slot toward the front of the computer, but it's on the left side instead of the right. Ignore this slot as well. On the Apple IIe, you can put the SCSI card in any slot except for slot 3. However, if you would like your computer to always start up from your hard drive, we still recommend that you put the SCSI card in slot 7. Place the card's gold fingers into the slot. Get them started with a gentle pressure and maybe a little rocking motion. Now press down firmly on the card until it is seated. Don't force it. Use moderate pressure and the card should slide right in. When the card's gold fingers have mostly disappeared into the slot, the card is properly seated. The card should now rest level with the slot. Now, remove one of the dust caps from the back of the 2GS. Just turn the latch 90 degrees counterclockwise and pull the cap off. If you have an Apple IIe, the caps just pop out with a little pressure from the inside. You'll need these two screws and this wrench. You will find them in this bag that came in the Apple II high-speed SCSI card box. The cable connector from the interface card fits into the back of the computer. You secure it from the back with the two hex head screws included with the card. Be sure they're nice and tight. You're done inside the computer now, so you can put the top back on. Now, connect the SCSI cable between the Q-Drive and the computer. First, connect the big end to the Q-Drive and clip it into place. It doesn't matter which connector you connect the cable to. Now, plug the terminator into the unused connector on the back of the drive and clip it into place.
Now connect the other end of the SCSI cable to the SCSI connector on the back of the computer. Tighten the thumb screws to hold it in place. By the way, you can connect more than one device to the same SCSI card by chaining them together. The terminator must be placed on the connector on the last drive in the chain, in our case, the Q drive. We're almost done. Just plug in the Q drive's power cable, first to the drive, then to a handy electrical outlet. Congratulations, you've just installed your Q drive. Now it's time to turn it on and configure it. Configuration is completely automatic and happens only the first time you turn on your drive. Turn on the Q drive and let it warm up for about 10 seconds. If you bought the Salvation Supreme, ProCell, or EasyDrive hard drive management system, put the first or only program disk into your main disk drive. The Q drive will automatically start up that disk after it finishes its configuration. Finally, turn on the computer. If everything is installed correctly, you'll soon see the Q drive startup screen. The drive will perform its diagnostics, locate the SCSI card, identify your computer, and configure itself. If you have an Apple IIe, configuration will take several minutes. It only takes a few seconds on a GS. After configuration is complete, the Q drive will automatically restart. If you put in your hard drive management system disk, the Q drive will start up that disk. Otherwise, the Q drive itself will start up. That's all there is to it. If you ran into a snag, stay tuned. The next section will help you identify and correct the problem. Otherwise, skip the next section and move on to the tips section, which contains important information about using your Q drive. If you ran into problems the first time you turned on your Q drive, keep watching. We hope we can solve them without a call to our technical support department. If when you turned on your computer and hard drive for the first time, the computer seemed to ignore the hard drive and boot from the floppy, there could be three different reasons for this. One possibility is that you turned on the computer too soon after the drive. On some systems, you may be able to turn on both at the same time and have it work fine. On many systems, though, you may need to turn on the hard drive first. Wait five to 10 seconds, and then turn on the computer. It depends on which computer you have, how fast it is, and what mechanism is being used in your Q drive. It's really convenient to turn both machines on at the same time. That way you can plug them both into the same power strip. You may want to try this to see if it works on your system. If you have an Apple IIe, you may have installed the SCSI card in a slot lower than one of your other drive controller cards. Since the Apple IIe starts at slot 7 and scans downward until it finds a disk drive, your hard drive controller should be in a slot higher than other drive controllers, usually slot 7. If you have another card in that slot, we suggest you move it to another slot. If you have a 2GS, check your control panel. The 2GS control panel is a built-in program which allows you to change many things about the way the computer operates. To get to the control panel, first press Apple Control Escape. That is, hold down the Apple and Control keys while you press and release Escape. This screen should appear. Now use the up or down arrow keys to choose the control panel and press Return. Again, use the up or down keys, this time choosing slots. And again, press Return to display the slot screen. The slot screen is used to tell the 2GS which slots contain cards and which should be mapped to the back panel of the 2GS. For instance, you cannot use a card in slot 2 and the modem port at the same time.